Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Computing Department at Desbury Laboratory. In this video, we are going to talk about how the wind flows around Desbury Tower and how scientists can predict this using special techniques called high-performance computing. But firstly, let's think about why this is important and why it can be useful in real life. Why are we asking about the wind around the tower? Well, the Stairsbury Tower is a very high building, and if you go on top of it, you'll be able to feel a very strong wind. And one day, the roof of a nearby building was destroyed by the wind. Obviously, we don't want this to happen again to any of the buildings, right? Unfortunately, experiments will not work here. Destroying the roof on purpose several times is certainly not possible. So, scientists try to perform similar experiments using computers instead. There is actually a whole discipline of science called computational fluid dynamics. Researchers working in this field answer the question of how different gases and liquids move using something called simulations. They create a virtual world with the same properties as a real one and look how it behaves. Then, things predicted on the computers turn out to be true in real life. But how do we set up a simulation? In the first step, we have to create a model of the tower. We place this in a large box, and it looks a little bit like this. We then fill the model with thousands of triangles and tetrahedra, which are triangular prisms, to create what is known as a computational grid. This is going to be really useful in a minute. Before that, let's discuss why we can't just put everything on our laptops. In the 21st century, we already have very fast computers, able to do almost everything we can think of. But is this enough for the simulation to be run? It turns out that some simulations are too large for an average computer to calculate it in a reasonable amount of time. This is because the real world is rather complicated, and recreating it inside a computer takes a lot of memory and computational power. Luckily, there is a solution to this. A computer consists of different parts. For example, the screen displays images, the keyboard is used for writing, the mouse is used for pointing. In a similar way, a part called the processor is responsible for making calculations. It is the brain of the computer. In our laptops, we usually just have one processor. But what happens if we put more than one brain into one computer? It turns out that if we put 12 processors into one computer, its power increases roughly 12 times. This is already enough for running our simulation. Now we need to know how to divide the tasks between the processors. We split the simulation using the triangles and tetrahedra we placed in it when making the computational grid. Then we assign a certain number of shapes to each processor. In this way, each processor has a small number of shapes to analyze, and the problem is solved much quicker. The process of splitting the tasks between different processors and running them at the same time is called parallel computing, something we use very often to run similar simulations. You can think about parallel computing like everyone in your class answering a different question from the same maths test. When all your answers are put together, you will have finished the test probably a lot faster than if you had done it by yourself. When our 12 processors' answers are put together, you get one final simulation. After all 12 processors have finished doing their calculations, we gather all results back together into a single outcome. This enables us to know the final behaviour of the wind in all places. Using a special software, we visualize it and make an animation which allows us to see what's going on around the tower. The result of 12 processors' work put together is shown here in these videos. The colors show the strength of the wind, with blue showing weaker airflow, green and yellow medium wind, and red showing stronger airflow. It is also possible to calculate the streamlines, which is the real path of the wind. They are shown as curly tubes in this video. If you were a balloon floating in air around the tower, your path would look exactly like this. 
As you can see, the wind around the tower does not flow in a straight line at all. When the simulation is done, we get a lot of useful information, for instance how fast and in which direction the wind flows. This information is then used to identify the parts of the tower that experience the strongest wind and design a good shielding for them so that the roof does not fall off. As we can see, parallel computing is not only a nice trick. It allows us to do important calculations which can be applied in real life and improve the safety. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to find out more about scientific computing or our laboratory, take a look at our social media and read the latest news from Dalsbury Lab.